I wrote one episode. Okay, so let's work out what we did. So, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to... So I did three, four... Four, is that enough? Hang on. Seven. Okay, so one... Yeah. Episode one and five, two. I think. Basically. Episode one and two. Three. three four, four. Five. Five, five me. Yeah. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. ten. I came up with a lot of ideas that were used. The fit into the whole thing. Yeah. Like, I... I it oversaw. I feel like I had more of a... Like, I, the kind of overarching view, you know. He's I, like, he was, he was a vital part of the writing process. Yeah. Was, yeah. Um, we've all seen those TV series where uh, <laughs> the ending is ambiguous or things aren't answered. Um, but we kind of got to hit a balance somewhere. So there was a lot of talk about the ending. Well, firstly, just to say as well, actually, obviously, we didn't know, do we make this as a totally contained thing, or do we make it with the intention of, it'd be great to do another? Absolutely. So, so obviously, we had made the decision, we would like to leave stuff open, because we would like to mm. do more. Mm. Um, and I think you'd always had the idea of ending on the doors opening, but yeah. then it was a case of, do we show a glimpse of what that is? So, yeah, uh, I, it's funny, because... Obviously, we've got to hit that balance where we want to leave it open, but also we don't want to leave it completely while you haven't thought of it. Like, I don't want <laughs> the audience to think, well, you don't know what's going on either. Like, I go, we know what's Which going we on. very much we, do. Oh, we definitely do. It's not, like, it's not like we don't know what we're doing, so we're going to leave it ambiguous. So I think the, the discussion was for that very, very end in terms of the doors open. We could leave you in sort of suspense there. We did think it probably needed a little bit more and this is why the, the ending of, of that reveal at the end happens what the post credit the, the post credit sure so the, the, did the, you the watch very the end of the credits well if exactly. you didn't Go do back. that now yeah. and then come back to this initially as well I do remember uh, just for the whole show we did have to simplify because I remember there was a point where we went quite far with the story and there was this whole conspiracy sure. angle involving Stephen's parents yeah. and it was just like it just got so big and again because you have a short <laughs> space time to explore these things it was I don't know, it was maybe an interesting idea, but it was certainly too much for so kind of such a short space of time. So it was just like, do you know what, I'll just make this simpler, simpler, simpler. Logistically, actually, it was quite a tricky one to make because all the other episodes are quite contained in that it's just in Stephen's house or it's just in the supermarket. So you go to one place in one day and you shoot the whole episode, in theory. Whereas uh, episode 10 was kind of involved bringing everyone back together again because we'd split them all off. So we had to go back. So it was, we were shooting on odd days in different locations. Oh, yeah, we need to get that little half page scene for episode 10 so we were ne that was the one where in our heads we were never quite sure how that was all going to string together sure. and also there was a lot of visual effects wasn't there so there's lots of stuff yeah. where mm. it was like there's just big holes in the edit ship and gas here and it's, that was just down to our effects guys to do sure. that so. yeah I mean the, the special effects in the show um, was a big challenge I mean it's what attracted me to do a sci-fi as opposed to something like a zombie series because we you know I knew what we could do uh, and what we couldn't do and I think there was I like kind of working just outside the comfort zone and I think there's certain I've worked with visual effects before and CG and it's great fun it's very time consuming but Horizon presented this option this kind of idea that we could do a few things that we hadn't done before um, so it was a mixture of what we could do and what we you know thought we could do and then it was about whether we could pull it off and I think you know we did to a certain extent we had some some uh, we had a couple of great uh, CG artists on the show Alan Tabret and Scott Martin who, who were fantastic and basically I think we, we clocked in about 140 shots in total spread over the whole 10 episodes um, and it was just about working those in and, and, and from an editing standpoint it could be a little bit awkward where you cut some dialogue and then you just cut to like Simon said just cut to a blank title or a background that we haven't put the effect in yet and you don't know how long that effect is going to last so you can't really trim that edit down just yet so you're working with those elements and like episode 10 was a bit of a nightmare for that because especially gearing up to the finale every other shot was an effect shot one of the things I did learn actually on this show regarding the effects is that there's a lot of effects in the show that are quite small. Uh, maybe it could be uh, a bullet ricochet or a changing a mobile phone screen, which is fairly straightforward as opposed to a big CG ship and some gas and this big explosion behind a building or whatever it might be. But what I did was in my head, I kind of separated the shots out as being the big numbers that would take the time uh, you know, to, to work on the, in, from a visual effects point of view and there was all these little ones that we could do quite easily but those little ones added up so we ended up, but especially in that episode 8 with the muzzle flashes and the bullet hits we ended up with something like 40 shots just in episode 8 when we were starting to discuss things that we realised we were perhaps going to be able to do with effects 
Um, certainly, I think we were maybe a little bit going, great, let's put that in there. Yeah, sure, like this plane sure. come down and it'd be yeah. great. But yeah, then as you said, that does then translate to 140 effect shots <laughs> yeah. in months and months of sure. work. And even the render times, I mean, when, you, yeah. when you put an effect shot together, the computer then has to render it, which is like literally stick everything together and, and export it out as a completed file that you can then put into the edit. And the render time sometimes would be 36, 40 hours. So you would leave your computer on overnight to put the shot together and then you'd watch it and go, ah, that bit's not quite right. Doing and it. then you would have to tweak it or do we live with it? Do we cover it over? What can we do with that? This was a chance to make something, you know, really fun, but also, you know, yeah, it was a chance to put in all those things that we love mm. to watch. Like, do you know what? Let's put in an explosion. Let's put in a plane crash because we didn't really get an opportunity to do no. all that. So yeah. let's go to time. Yeah. And we did. Yeah. But once Pandora's box has been opened, it's like, well, if you yeah. go down that road, you also have to see this, this and this. Yeah. And then we have to see the aftermath of that and it's like well you know you can you can blow stuff up but you know what's the result of that do we need to see you know the damage so basically down? two is going to be just drama pretty so much two people chatting there'll be no space yeah. yeah or it's going to be mad max yeah yes yeah. <laughs> i think location just just generally speaking bristol's just a great place to shoot yeah. absolutely Bristol's a great place to shoot, and I think, again, credit to, to our effects guys as well, I think the, the imagery of things like the suspension bridge and obviously all the things that we've used for our kind of promotional material, it's so strong, isn't it? Sure. It's an image, and I think putting something, something as iconic as that and putting that with something as kind of bizarre as a big spaceship, I think I think there's just a lot in that image, really, that, that, that sells it. How did we like divide up the episodes? Because sure. it, was it just a case? Because I think you already came in, no, kind of having a very clear idea for episode one. Yes. Which dare I say made it fairly easy for the rest of us because you kind of <laughs> you kind of established then what the voices of the characters were, and obviously sure. we had group discussions about it. But so I think you took the first one, but. I mean, after that, it was just a case of, I think, who wants what, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, after us, we had sat in the room and said, this is what the story's going to be, and then we kind of wrote, wrote down which episodes would cover which locations, and I think we just kind of just started picking at each one and go, do you know what, I fancy that one, it's a, you know, I fancy this one, and, and I think, obviously, Chris wanted to take this introduction of a new character in episode six, so you wanted to do that, and I think it was just what we kind of fancied, really, and what we, you know, we think, we thought we were best suited for. One of the things we kind of decided early on was, okay, if we're going to have these cliffhangers, maybe it'd be fun to have an episode where you're following one group of people, leave them in some sort of dire situation, and then the next episode you're with someone else. So, uh, you know, we kind of get to delay that answer for a bit. Sure. I and I fun. think, I mean, that was nice part, you know, the nice thing about the structuring, you know, in the, in the writers' meetings where we would actually kind of say, how far can we push this where, you know, we'd see these characters at the end of episodes three and then we don't come back to them until episode five mm -hmm. and it just i think it just allowed us to play with time as well because we might have some characters that needed to drive somewhere and get across town and obviously we wouldn't want to see, just have an episode where they're in the car so if we cut to another episode with some other characters doing something else it would allow these characters over here to have traveled and then we can pick them up at the beginning of the next episode and i think the way it's been broken up like that as well and, and separating some of the characters is that there are points where we want to concentrate on particular relationships, so particular dynamics between characters, or that there's a, there's a particular piece of character development that we, we want to do. We can't really do that if everyone's together in a quite a chaotic situation all the time. So sometimes it was, it was necessary to take people out, put them on their own somewhere for a bit, so that we can do those kinds of things. Everyone would know what the sort of A and B of their episode was. They wouldn't know necessarily how we were going to take you from one to the other mm. but you know for instance if I was writing uh, episode three was the first one I wrote we knew what the episode was going to be about and I knew what Paul was going to roughly what Paul was going to do in two to motivate the events of three and then similarly you know we knew how three was going to end um, but yeah you, it, it was kind of up to us as we wrote to decide okay how do we make these things happen within the individual episode itself. One of the good things about writing as a team is that I'll be writing at home and I'll just get a text message off Sai saying, could you plant something for me? Could you mention something in episode two? Because I'm doing episode five right now and mm -hmm. I want to mention this, but I need it to be planted before. So I'm kind of you know, writing something in my script so Sai can pay it off in his. So it's a cool idea. So we're kind of reversing it around and, and making sure that things have been sprinkled in the earlier script so that they can get paid off. By characters in the later scripts and it was a nice kind of mix and match yeah, it's fun way of working it is a fun way of working and um it was kind of when you and then we eventually once we'd all finished the scripts we all sat back down and just read all through them um, chris of course oversaw all of it and uh for his, con script, yeah, for his consultancy okay and yeah. just make sure it was okay put yeah. a stamp on the script should we go and 
Right, season two then? Yeah, absolutely. Let's it's go on. Clearly they want us to make it. Yeah, so. yeah. Let's uh, dig ourselves out of those holes. I want to kill one of the main characters, actually. I yeah. think we should kill them all, actually. Yeah. Set it all at night. Set it all at night. Yeah, yeah. all at night.